Okay, well this is certainly not meant to be an unboxing video, but this is an vert. Actually, it's a inverter of some type. It's made in China. And uh, MSW 1000 watt LCD black made in China. And then there's uh, some kind of probably an Amazon number. I've redacted a little bit of the information on the box here. Anyhow, a uh, customer brought this to me, wanted me to check it out. Um, that's probably not going to be very helpful unless you just want to run like a 60 watt light bulb. So here is the inverter. Oh, look at that. It actually says 2000 watts. I cannot believe that. 12 volt to AC 110 volt. And then there's some other nomenclature over here. Normal load, full load operation or overload, I guess. It's sending out X's, dashes, or dots. F2000H made in China. All the best stuff's made in China. And a book telling you how to possibly hook it up. Feel free to pause this and read if necessary. And they expect you to fill this out. Wow. <laughs> uh, let's zoom in on it just a little bit. I realize it is auto autofocus, so it's going to be hunting. And then uh, here are some specs. Looks like they have uh, 80 watts all the way up to 5,000 watts. Output voltage. Oh, they have a 110, excuse me, a 100, 110, 115, 120 internal adjustable. And then a, what is that, 200, 220, 230, 240 internal adjustable, plus or minus 10%. Uh, that must be for European. I'm a P in European, 50 hertz plus or minus five hertz, and then 50, 60 hertz optional. I wonder how you set that up. Maybe it's on there and I just missed it. So uh, this is the 12 volt version, high cutoff 15 volts, low voltage 10.5, low voltage, oh, low voltage alarm 10.5, cutoff is 10 volts, input voltage rate 10 to 30, reverse connect protection input fuse piece, indicator light green, power indicator red fault, cooling is fan, some of the inverter is not designing under voltage alarms. Under voltage protect protection is 9.5 plus or minus 0.3 volts. Um, I didn't really look closely to see if it talks about the adjustments in here because it does say it's internally adjustable. Once again, uh, I'm not going to read every single thing. I'm sure j this is just a modified sine wave or as I call it a stepped square wave or just a pure square wave inverter. Uh, okay, well, let's go ahead and grab a couple batteries and hook this thing up and see. Just take those off. Let's go ahead and supply it with 12 volts first off and see if it even lights up and does anything. I just got to find my cables. There they are. Nope, that's not them. Oh, they're buried on the work workbench. Okay, well, there's one of them. These are not super robust cables, by the way. They're just test, test lead. There's some numbers on it there. I think they came from uh, DigiKey. 0.75 millimeters squared. 12 amps. Okay, well, close enough. So we'll just hook these up to the power supply. And I'm just going to supply, oh, of course, it's not hollow, thanks. And I'm just going to supply, if I can get the other lead out of here, there it is. That's the one that broke the other day. So I'll turn the power supply on first, and uh, it's set for 2.3 volts, so let's get it up to, uh, let's take it up to about 14 and a half volts. There's 14.8. Current is at maximum right now. So shut the power supply back off, connect this, and turn the power supply on. And then we'll turn this on. There is a switch on the front here. And I do hear a fan running. And uh, lights are bright. But it does say power and USB. 
and it is saying 14.6 14.7 volts oh, the display is awfully dim that's pretty close let's turn off the autofocus and I'll try to get a little bit better focus uh, that's going to be about as good as it gets. So it's saying 132 volts output right now. Should we plug something into it? Let's see if it even lights up. Man, it is loud. Loud, loud, loud. Okay. Zoom out. This is, no, well, that's an LED bulb that's bad. It flickers sometimes. See what happens here. Well, it certainly does light up. We're up to 2.4 amps. And uh, it says 129 volts. 14.4 volts. Oh, there's the, there's the LED bulb flickering. That's, that's what's wrong with it. I thought I had, yeah, I do. If I can reach it. Uh... I thought I had an incandescent. Well, maybe not. And now I don't see it. Okay, well, scratch that idea. Just for the heck of it, let's get a voltmeter out. We'll put it in AC. And we'll just measure. It does say 131. That's pretty close. Look at the frequency. Well, 58.9 hertz, that's not too terribly bad. Uh, one moment while I try to find a larger load to put on this thing. Okay, so I have a kilowatt, and I do have a little space heater plugged into it. So let's turn that on. See what it has to say. 127 volts. We're saying 130 over here. And we'll step through these. Well, power factor should be nothing because there's no load. 58.8 hertz. So let's just go to... Uh, we'll go to watts. Oh, the heater shouldn't be drawing anything. I think it's just the noise of the inverter causing this. I think it's just the square wave is messing with it. So I'm just going to put it on fan. And the fan is running, and I'm sure once I turn this to low, it's going to trip my power supply. It's only good for 10 amps. Yep. Not happy about that. Okay, let me go grab a couple batteries. I have uh, four lawn and tractor batteries that I use for just such an occasion. So I'll go get uh, probably two of them. We'll hook it up and load this thing down and see what happens. Okay, so I do have two batteries. They are in parallel right now, and I do have my power supply connected to it just to help charge them a little bit. So let's move the camera back down to here. We'll zoom in on it just a wee bit. So there's 127 volts. There's just the fan on. Let's just go to uh, watts. And we'll go to low. And we're showing 500 watts. Oh yeah, it's pulling down to 103 volts on low. Uh, we're up to 550 watts. Let's go to medium, which I think is about 750. There, it's warming up. Didn't like that. And the voltage didn't drop too low. I think it went into overload. So we'll go back to low here. It's not happy with that at all. 
And the voltage is definitely not dropping off at all. There's watts. Go back to low again. Where's this thing kick out at? Five, five, yeah, 500 watts is the best it'll do. And it is definitely pulling down. So they're saying 2,000. Not even close. I can barely get 500 out of this thing before it pulls down. And I don't think it's a battery voltage dropping too much. We're still at 13 volts, according to this. 13 volts. There's watts, 560 watts, 540. Let's go back to medium. Watch this come up. 400, 450, 485, 10, 520, 550. Yeah, that's the best it'll do. And the battery voltage never dropped below 13 volts. Although it's saying 12.4 now. That still shouldn't trigger any issues whatsoever. What are we doing with the lights over here? We're just showing fault. I think we got something going on internally because I'm showing 12.6 here. Let's just measure it at the terminals to be safe. So let's do it again. Medium power. Oh, well, that's not good. 11.1. .1. What am I at, at the battery? I'm at 11.6. I have a bad jumper. Maybe I need to get all four batteries connected. Although it's still, I don't think it should be cutting out with that high a voltage. It specifically said, I think in the uh, little brochure over here, low voltage cutoff was 10.0 and low voltage alarm was 10.5 we're not even near that but it's the voltage drop that i'm more concerned with than anything interesting all right there's powers back off let me pause this this might be the end i don't know i'm going to open it up and see what's inside well let me tell you something these cables they're hot they are hot. I wonder how many amps we're pulling. Let me go get my clamp-on amp meter, my DC amp meter, and we'll find out. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So there's uh, on, it's 800 milliamps. Off should be zero. There we go, zero it back out. Let's see if we can get the light to come back on and stay on. Okay, power on. There's just the fan, 1.7 amps. There's low. We'll put it right up to medium, see what the amp says. 40 amps. 50. 60 amps. 70. 70. So we got to about 84 amps before it cut out. And let me tell you what, these cables, they get hot very, very quickly. They look like they're big beefy cables, like they're probably either four or six gauge. But I took a look at the amount of wire that's in there and it's probably on the order of eight or 10 gauge wire. At least they did solder it, that's, that's good, but there's, this thing's not gonna pull a thousand watts. Maybe 500, that'd be about it in my recommendation. Anyhow, that's where it is. 
I don't think the battery voltage is pulling down too much like it says in the manual. 10.5 is the alarm, 10.0 is cut out, and I'm still up at like 11.3, 11.4 volts. So I don't think it's the batteries going dead that's causing the issue. So uh, let's just go ahead and pop the top on it and see what it looks like inside. Well, you know, I thought it was going to be a little bit worse inside, but it doesn't look too terribly bad. It's definitely a square wave inverter. There's no output buffering, output coils. Uh, these FETs, you can actually see that they connect right to the AC socket right here. So it's just switching. Basically, uh, AC power is going to come in, go through these four 50 amp fuses. So it's got basically two inverter stages. It's going to convert the 12 volts to about 140, 150 volts DC right here with these MOSFETs. One set right there, one set right here for positive and negative output. It's going to take that 150 volts DC and alternately chop it with these four output FETs and then just send it here. There's no filtering. There's not even, I would expect, like even a capacitor somewhere just across here to get rid of the spikes, but there's nothing there whatsoever. It's just, it's just a cheap inverter is all it is. I wonder what the value on these caps are. Uh, 2200 at 25 and I'm sure these are 2200s at 25 those are the input filter caps for the DC then these are going to be the high voltage DC output filter caps and they are 47 microfarads 200 volts I wish I could see oh look at that they're actually 105 degrees Celsius caps you can see the 105 right there Wow, amazing. They use 105 degrees Celsius caps. But uh, it does have an actual little, uh, probably a thermistor right there, or a uh, maybe a, a RTD, probably a thermistor more likely than anything to measure the heat sink temperature. And they did actually put heat sink compound behind the silicone pad, which is not necessary. Maybe only on a couple of them, I'm not sure. What about over here? Yep, heat sink compound behind the silicone pad there. I'm gonna say, use this at 500 watts max. Yeah, 500 watts max. 12 volt, 1K, 110 volts. Maybe that's the, uh, 1K would be the uh, insulation resistance rating, 1000 volts maximum. I see virtually no suppression on here whatsoever, even if they would have just hung like a, a 0.1 microfarad cap across this just to, I don't know, help smooth it out ever so slightly. They could use a uh, common mode choke on the output as well. But anyhow, that's, I'm not gonna go any deeper into this. It, it said it was adjustable inside. Remember the instruction said something about 10% adjustable output voltage, but I don't see even a single pot in this thing. And then here's the display board right there. And I wonder, whole tech is the microprocessor. I don't see any pots on this, any adjustments whatsoever. I'm just going to put it back together and give it back to the customer. Just say, yeah, good luck. Uh, I don't think that these fuses are actually good for 50 amps. They, they look like just common um, automotive fuses. And as far as I know, they, those are only supposed to go up to 30 amps. But it doesn't look too terribly bad in, in an emergency. It'll, uh, it'll get your fan running. That's about it. Maybe a, maybe a 500 watt heater. I wouldn't push it much, much past that. Anyhow, let's go back to manual focus. That is it. The, uh, what the heck is even the brand name on this thing? Liv Yang, L V Y U A N, Liv Yan. Uh, yeah, 2000 watts. I don't think so. Because when I had it up to 700 watts, it already was showing the 100% load up here on the output. Well, you get what you pay for. I wonder what this thing costs. I wonder if they still have them on Amazon. I should go uh, look that up. Just in case you were curious, that's the fan. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day.
Bye bye. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed my other two batteries and I have all four of them connected now. So let me get a voltmeter. And we'll just go ahead and measure over here. So that's all four batteries connected together. And they're currently at 14.38 volts. So they are fully charged. I do have the 10 amp power supply helping to charge them. All four are charging at 4.2 amps right now. So if they're not 100%, they're 99%. Um, yeah, let's move some of this crap out of the way. And hopefully I'll zoom this back out down here. Let's get a block of wood and try to set this up where maybe you can see the display. We'll go back to 600 amps and I have to change it to amps DC because it's on AC now. Oh, there it is. Duh. My bad. And so this is the delta that zeroes it out, even though it's not really necessary. Okay, so let's switch this thing back on. Move it over just a little bit. Hopefully uh, the lights will not be in the way. And we'll see what it's gonna do with four batteries connected now. And you know what I should do is get a couple of test leads and I'll connect the voltmeter up to this as well. So yeah, a little bonus footage, a little bonus footage. Okay, everybody can see that okay, DC volts. And I think what I'm gonna do is just Clamp it right on to, hopefully nothing shorts out. That would be bad. I think it'll be okay. And we'll just push those down as little extra insulation protection. Okay, so we can see where our battery voltage is 14.2. We're at 1.2 amps DC. Our output voltage is 126. They're saying 128, which has been pretty close. So once again, let's go ahead and take it up to stage two on the fan. Batteries are pulling down. And we'll go to watts, 560, 580. We're drawing 72 amps, 80 amps. We're down to 11.9, let's just kick it up on high. No, it does not like high. We'll go back to medium. Yeah, that's it. 700 watts. We're still at about 12 volts. Uh, yeah, it can't even handle it. I'm only pulling down to, let's see, let's go to min max. 11.94 volts. This thing should be totally happy with that. Totally happy. What are we doing at the battery terminals? Don't short out, don't short out. Take it out of min-max. I realize the probes are backwards. So over here, we're still pulling down to 10.9. I think a lot of that is gonna be voltage drop across these cables, because they are hot. We'll go back to one. Our voltage is still, according to this, 12.6. And of course, every time it does that, it blips this thing out. Yeah, it says it's 100% right now. And that's at 595 watts. Yeah, 106 volts AC, That that is not anywhere near acceptable. Yeah, I'm showing 103 here, 105 on the meter, and it's just starting to peak that 
might be kind of hard to see that red bar for 100 percent it's just a crappy inverter that's all there is to it that is all there is to it okay well i think i've done my due diligence on this the only other thing i can do is get out the infrared camera and actually show you how hot these cables are getting one moment please okay so here is the infrared camera right now and i don't have i don't have the inverter on this is residual temperature in the cables and you can see right there we're at 122 degrees and uh yeah 122 let's turn this thing back on okay power is on and where should i look where's the best place to look yeah we're at 112 back there just the case of the inverter is getting warm which i'm surprised it's doing as good as it's doing Okay, so let's turn this back on. There is stage two on the heater. You can actually see the heater is generating heat there. Then we'll get over here so the hotspot doesn't read it. We're at 140. There, it's starting to fuzz out. Wow, that one connection internally is just terrible right there. 180 degrees on that terminal. And we're at 170 on that one. I just want to get the cables only if I could. So much hot stuff, it's really hard to do. Okay, so there's just the cables, 128 degrees. That thing is generating a tremendous amount of heat. You can see the heat generated by the inverter. It's up to 130 degrees already. Terminals on the back of the inverter. They're coming up to 150 degrees, basically. Yeah, a little bonus footage. There you go. And my terminals are barely warm. My cables that connect battery to battery, because these are, I believe, 10 gauge cables that are connecting the battery. You can see how hot the cables are that are supplied with the inverter. Well, you get what you pay for. Okay, let's put this back on low. And we'll see what happens over here. Yeah, you can see the other elements are coming on now on low. Incidentally, this heater over here uh, does a very good job and it has a power factor of virtually one. Uh, the only thing that has a poor power factor is the shaded pole motor that's in there. But other than that, this little heater, it doesn't use diodes to switch from low to medium to high. It actually switches the elements on and off. But, yeah, there it is. Maybe with better cables it would work a little bit better, but I'm not going to invest any more time. I've already got a little over an hour into this thing as it stands right now. Okay, well, there you go. The, uh, what the heck was it? 71 amps going into it right now. The Lai Yong. Lai Yong inverter. Everybody, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.